nation is in deep mourning over the death of President John F. Kennedy, who was struck down by an assassin's bullet earlier today. The president died, and no one knows what to say. People all over the world are sending their condolences. Heads of state, military leaders, all of them. The death of one white man doesn't really change the nature of our difficulty with the American way of doing things. Now, just because he's dead, and as I said, I'm sorry about that, but just because he's dead doesn't mean the drugs have stopped flooding our neighborhoods or that the police aren't still brutalizing our communities. You don't have to say all of that. Malcolm, why can't you just keep your mouth shut for once? One more time, Malcolm. Do you have any thoughts or opinions about the assassination? Well, I would have to say that it seems like a case of when the chickens came home to roost. <sighs> that the violence being done to my people has come full circle and struck one of them down. Now, it's a shame. But you can't live in a violent country and not expect to be touched by that violence. Uh, come. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I came as soon as I could. I heard you on the radio say all that. Could you repeat that, sir? Uh, let's cut the sir junk, Malcolm. I'm on to you. Uh, did you get my directive? Both of them. Well, what happened? May I sit down? Of course. Have a seat, Malcolm. Have a seat. If you got both directives, then tell me what happened. Well, nothing really happened. He asked me a few questions. I began... Now you just blabbed away like a chicken against my orders to have you dancing on a string. You don't see it. You can't hear it. Oh, sir, I hardly said anything. I mean, the interview lasted no more than two or three minutes. Now, the most expensive two or three minutes of your life. What do you mean? Didn't you notice anything particular about the directive? Uh, no, it just appeared as though everybody got one. So have all. you heard Lewis or Wallace or any of the others on the radio? Well, well, I haven't had time, sir. I hardly spoke to Betty. Betty! Betty! Be I want to talk to you. Now it's about Betty. Well, she's my heart, sir, and I like to speak with my heart. You should speak to me. I do. Look, there, there haven't been any repercussions about the paternity suits, have there? I would hope you wouldn't want to embarrass me, Malcolm. No, sir. Well, then why did you open up your mouth about the assassination? I mean, why did you have to be so gabby with it? It looks like the chickens have come home to roost. What is that? A joke? Humor? Black humor. Or well, now, the, the nation of Islam is associated with it through you. Do you have any idea of the possible recrimination? There won't be any recriminations. Now, what I said was morally straight and sympathetic to them and to us. Violence simply is the way of this country. And look at the toll. No recriminations. None. No, what about the farm in the South, huh? The dead cattle, the poison water. No recriminations. People are always looking for an excuse. The more you talk, Malcolm, the more people have an excuse for doing what they do in this country. Why do you think I sent the directive? Uh, for my health. Hmm? No talk. Say nothing. Sir, I have a right to talk. You're not leaving me any choice. Oh, sir, your paranoia is not leaving you any choice. You keep thinking I want your job. Who's told you that? What clandestine meetings have I had with what minister? You can't say. You can't say because there aren't any. No one. I'm so pure, it's driving you nuts. You know, I... I wish I could have taken out my frustrations on a woman like you did, but I believe in what I'm doing, Mr. Muhammad. I believe in it. And so does my family, so I've got a... a, a hundred and... Even if I only put out 50%, I'd still be ahead, but I don't. I put out 150%, and we all keep moving. Do you want to withdraw from this movement? Oh, no, of course not. Moving means everything to me. Help build it from one mosque, maybe two, to their dozens all over the country. 
Well, people who have never heard of the nation, now they, they look through the paper for what they can find. You know, you once told me about how difficult it was for you to speak to anyone else except me. Well, I told you about Betty. You turned around and you got jealous of Betty. You won't let me talk to Wallace anymore because you feel I have an undue influence upon him. But, sir, you underestimate Wallace. He's the best thing in this movement. He's, he's bright. He's articulate. He knows languages. And he knows how to express himself so that others may follow. And you think I don't? Well, You refuse to respond to the new time. I mean, it, 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 it takes a new head, uh, a computer brain to deal with everything going on out there in the world. Uh, what are you saying all this? Because I want you to know that if you should retire or, or die, you, you should leave the nation to Wallace. He's the natural successor. You're saying all that, so I don't retract what I haven't done yet. You know, I am. Uh, I'm scared, Mr. Muhammad. Yeah. Really scared. When I quit the drugs, I had you and the nation to lean on, and now I feel like I don't have anyone. But I'm not going back to the drugs. And I'm not going to lean on my family. And you still want to be in the movement. Yes, sir. You understand I have to punish you. So you've done such a good job with me, I can... I can stand on my own now, which is pretty much the way it's been. I understand what you're saying, now. I have to silence you for 30, no, 90 days. And I accept the punishment as just, Mr. Muhammad. That means you can't speak at the mosque. I'll get someone to speak and, until the sentence is served. And remember, that means no talking. You are silent. Mosque, mosque number seven, now I, I can't talk there, I can't say anything there. Silenced! Like my brother I Reggie. I said silence. I, I bring only the truth to you, Mr. Muhammad. Now, it isn't pleasant, I know that. You're a great man. I, I owe you everything in my life. But to silence me in my own mosque? Well, all right, I, I won't make any speeches. I, I won't whisper. Please, please, uh, let me speak in my own mind. Do you submit? Sir, I, I built that mosque. Now it, it feels like my own hand. Every, every stone, every chair. I sweated, I, I bled, I almost died doing Do it. Do you submit? Whatever position I've attained as a Muslim, I've attained it through his guidance and through his help. Uh, but there, during the 90 days that I've been silent, I have come to the conclusion that uh, I can best help spread the solution that the, and the diagnosis that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gives of the so-called Negro problem in this country by continuing to remain out of the nation of Islam and working on my own without restriction in the way that I think I best know how. Betty, my wife, will want to know now, should I look at her for 90 days in silence? No, it's unjust. The directors were unjust. This, this whole sense of dictatorship is unjust. 